Hello and welcome back. I am Synthetic Frost, and this is part three of our continuing series, How to Play Elite Dangerous. On today's episode, we will be covering the galaxy map and basic navigation. So this will be a big step up in complexity compared to the last two videos. So try to bear with me here. First things first, I want to clear up something that I said in the first video that was in error. Originally, I said that this list on the navigation pad was what you could get to in one tank of gas. That wasn't necessarily true, and I do apologize for that. The reason why I said it that way is because I was just focused on what I was trying to say next, and I just kind of glossed over it without even thinking. And uh, what this really is, is the list of everything you can get to in the single hyper jump, or frame ship jump. Uh, your gas tank can hold as much as 10 to 15 hyperspace jumps on a tank. and But you do have a limited range on your hyperspace drive. And that will increase and decrease based on the grade of the drive that you buy for your ship. The ship itself, the weight of the ship, the cargo you have in your ship. You know, all that stuff is going to be determined how far you can do or how far you can go in one jump. And so you might notice that the next thing up past 4.7 light years at Ephesus is exceeding the ship's mass. And the reason for that is because you'll see here my current ship, the smallest one, the starter ship in the game, the Sidewinder, has a max jump range of uh, 7.5 light years. And if I were to add cargo to that the range I could go in one jump would go way down see if I add four tons of cargo the range jumps down to under seven light years so just wanted to put that out there now let's say I wanted to go to a different planet like right now we're still in I would just three four seven if I were to go to Everett and target that with the select button here. This is select, plot route, system information, and exploration, and trade data. And I'll go over those in a minute. But right now I've selected Everett. So let's go back out to the cockpit. And you can see that I've selected Everett because it's targeted right there in the center of the screen. It's outside the space station, obviously, four or eight years away. And you can see on the bottom right hand side of the fuel gauge that the blue segment on the right hand side of the fuel bar the fuel gauge is the estimated fuel consumption to make such a jump at four light years away now if I were to go to somewhere a little further away like Chamunda or Patriti a locked destination You'll see that even though it's not that much bigger of a jump from 4 to 7, the fuel consumption is exponentially higher. So, what this means is that it might actually be more beneficial for everybody to do a larger number of smaller jumps than a smaller number of larger jumps. And I'll go over that in a second here. Okay, for, well, first things first. Uh, if I were to go to our starting group, if I mouse over the planet, then it will show the basic information of the planet, or of the system. I should say system, not planet. It will show the basic information of the system in the information to have on the left-hand side. I can select it here. Now, if I were to go plot a route to it, nothing might happen because it were already there. But if I were to plot a route to Everett, it plots a route to it. And shows the basic information. System map, or system view, sometimes it takes quite a bit to load here. But as soon as it does, we'll show you what it does. The system map is the map of that system. We've selected the Everett system here. So this is, Everett has a class K star, it shows the age and relevant information here. 
but you'll notice that Everett has quite a few planets in it. And not only several planets, but several outposts and stations as well. These circle ones are the stations, and these are the outposts over here. Now you look at this one, this one looks like an almost Earth-like world. It's got a suitable atmosphere suitable for water-based life, and it has a pretty big station with an influence of 35% within this solar system. Now, this is where it's going to get a little uh, complex. This is where I have to start talking about trade data and how to use this galaxy map for trading, plotting routes, and all that stuff. So bear with me as this gets a little information overload here. You'll notice that each station has an import and export at the bottom of the list here. And a prohibited list, so you cannot trade these items at the station without getting a fine or attacked. So... Like Cleave Hub, for example, exports power generators, power generators, marine equipment, hydrogen fuel, and it imports leather, aluminum, synthetic fabrics. So let's say I wanted to start a trade with Cleave Hub and trade some power generators for leather. I would have to go out to the galaxy map and find a system that had weather. Okay, so we're going to scroll down here. We're going to uncheck everything. Consumer items, I don't think it's weather. I think it's textiles is weather, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, so I have to go find a system with trade data that has weather around here. And in order to do that, I would have to go find a planet with weather. And that is really the time consuming part of this game. There's really no good way to do that other than just kind of assume that weather might be found on industrial or agricultural worlds. So, I mean, you can find weather anywhere. Those are just probably the most common based on, you know, common sense. There's not really another way to scan for it. So, if I were to go to an industrial world like Shimunga, they might have it, they might not. And, like I said, this is what's time consuming about it, because you kind of have to visually scan all of these worlds. Yeah, see, they import leather as well, so no, they're not going to be exporting it. So... Anyway, that's really how you go about finding it. In order to use this part of the galaxy map though, the filters, let's say you wanted to go to an industrial world that might have an upgrade for you. We're gonna get rid of everything and we're gonna check industrial. That shows all the nearby industrial worlds. There's a lot of them. Obviously Everett is the closest one to us. Or let's say we wanted to check out High Tech World. There is one right there. GD219. Unfortunately it does not look like we can actually get to it. At least in our current jump range. Let's see if I plot a route to it. Does it look like it's gonna work? Oh, it does. Oh, but see how far? Yeah, see, that's very far out of the way. And we would run out of gas at this last solid line right here. So, this far exceeds what we can get to on one tank of gas. So, we either have to have planets with stations at every point of the jump so we can refill on gas on the way there or we can buy fuel scoop and scoop 
uh, feel from every sun that we come across. But not all suns have feelable scoop or scoopable fuel. So that's kind of a uh, dangerous journey that we're trying to embark on there. So it looks like high tech systems are a little dangerous. Should I say elite dangerous to get to at this point in time. So really the best thing we can do is stick around this little neck of the woods here. Select our system. Okay, anyway. Everett looks like a pretty good spot to go to. It has a lot of planets, a lot of systems to visit. Probably has some pretty good um, missions and all that stuff to pick up as well. So, we didn't find anything here, I don't think. What we can do is, instead of having to go visit it, we can actually buy trade data. And I think you can only do that when you're in any adjacent system, I think. I think you have to be in at least one system over close to it to be able to purchase the system's trade data. But as you can see, it's importing a lot. It's importing a lot from these three planets, 3447, Frigaga, Frigaha, I think it's Frigaha, and 1448. But let's see, it's got a lot of green and yellow. So that would be, you know, textiles, food, and medicine. So. Oh, I forgot. I didn't even realize. 3447 is an agricultural world. So. Let's look at the system map and see what we can find. Oh, yeah. I forgot how much was here. Your starting system is a binary system. No wonder it's so big. Exports. Cobalt. That's a good starting. Trade is cobalt. Anyway, you guys get the idea. I don't need to go really into this so much. Alright, so let's... You guys get the basic of the galaxy map. I'm not going to go too much more into that. If you guys have any more questions. Um, let's go into Starboard Services. And see if they have any missions. Okay, so they have quite a few missions here. Okay, so how this works. The ones with targeting are uh, combat missions. The ones with uh, canisters are usually trade missions. And the ones with arrows are usually like uh, delivery missions that don't take up cargo holds at all. And I can tell you right off the bat that the ones that are hundreds of thousands of credits, like Hunters Wanted and Hunters Sought here, those are almost always, always going to be well above the skill and the... It's going to be well above your level when you're first starting out. Because you need a much bigger ship to take the missions on. Because these are almost always anacondas that have elite NPC AI on them. So uh, you're not going to be able to take any of these guys out in your starter ship. You're going to need a much bigger ship for that. But let's see. This one looking for a handout it looks like. Yeah, see, they want you to bring slaves to this system. So we would actually have to go out, buy slaves, or find them somewhere to get slaves and to get your hands on slaves any way you can and uh, bring them back here. That can be very questionable legally, so I'm going to decline that. Not in the moment. This is... It depends on what you want to start doing. If you don't mind doing illegal activity, this is one of the better starter missions because it's 
All you have to do is go out and find a black box out in open space. And all you have to do is scoop it up in your cargo hold, come back here, and you'll get 11,000 credits. That's pretty easy money. So, where was this? This is an Auri sector. I'm not going to go there, I don't think. Again, this wants you to bring back lithium. And you can get lithium pretty much any way you want, I, I believe. But I think the most legal way to do it is to uh, go out, find a system that has it, and buy it. Like a, a high-tech refinery planet might have it. And then come back here. And, but 14,000 credits might not be worth the cost of the lithium. I don't know how much lithium costs. But here's one that's going to Everett. And there's no hole, so we'll accept that one. And we've been on the menu for quite a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit the menu, come back into it, and see if it's refreshed the mission map here. Actually, it looks like it kind of did. Oh, maybe not. No, I don't think it did. Anyway, so we got that delivery mission to Everett. So let's go and select Everett. We'll walk destination. And we'll go ahead and go there. Here we go. Landing gear up. Ooh, look at that, Everett's right in front of us. So you'll see that I'm gonna get rid of my weapon power that I'm not using. Put everything in the engines. And we're gonna boost. Boosting takes your capacitor power, and having more power in your engines allows that to recharge faster. You'll see that the mass clock is no longer lit up so we can frame ship drive charge. charge your frame ship drive and off we go four three two one engage Right, so the first thing you want to do when you're coming out of hyperspace, throttle all the way down. Have your throttle all the way back. Because you come out right next to a star, as you can see here. And if you're going out at full throttle, you will most likely crash into the sun before you can react. And that's not a good thing. You'll you won't die, but you'll take a lot of heat damage and uh, it takes a while to get out of there, out of its gravitational well. So, all right, so what we're gonna do, where is this Ackerman Market? Okay, so we have to go find Ackerman Market. There it is right there. It has 264, oh, what do you know, it's right in front of us. That was easy. All right, here's the main thing about Super Cruise. There are three, main, there are three modes of travel. The one that you saw in the first two videos, where I'm just flying around and then you saw us right now in super cruise and then the uh, hyperspace travel from star to star now what you want to do is have your throttle all the way at max and then pull it down just as you saw me do just there when it 
when the arrival time reaches 7 seconds. At 6 seconds arrival time, you'll see right in the center of the screen there, uh, you'll want to put your throttle down into the blue area. If you have your throttle too high and the arrival time reaches below 6 seconds, you're going too fast and you're going to overshoot your target. When you put your throttle into the blue, just as you hit 6 seconds or 7 seconds, you'll decelerate at the same rate that the arrival time would have come up. So you'll not overshoot. And a lot of a lot of new players overshoot their target. Just know that if you put your throttle in the blue area before the arrival time hits 6 seconds, you'll be fine. So that's your tip for today. Another tip is to come in between the system and or between the uh, station and the planet. You'll see the planet is actually behind me. You saw it kind of come up right underneath me. If I come in between the station and the planet, normally the station's portal will come will be near your exit point. Your station, the uh, station's uh, port will be near the. Yeah. Docking request granted. Sorry, that threw me off. Anyway, you saw that I just, uh, you saw that I just requested the dock, and we're gonna go into dock here. This is the first time you guys have seen. One of the bigger stations, I think. I think I've only been to Outpost so far. So, actually, let's take a quick, quick little detour here. This is a huge station, isn't it? Holy cow. I don't think we can fit in there, but I'm gonna try just to be. What do you know? We can. <laughs> All right, back to the opening of the portal, shall we? Scan detected. I love flying around. I just, I, I love doing it. Alright, so I'm gonna use my lateral thrusters and my boost to get in near. Alright, so let's go ahead and land inside here. And you'll notice that the station was rotating. That's what the uh, rotational correction is that I mentioned in a previous video. If I turn rota rotational correction off, the station rotates and my ship does not compensate for it. So, I have to turn on rotational correction to compensate for that. Otherwise, you would have to land manually and that can be difficult and not fun. No, you'll notice my landing pad is number 31. It's landing pad 31 is not currently on my screen. So if you notice between on the left hand side of the screen between the diagram the 3D model of my target and my center console of the sensors there's a targeting reticle and the targeting reticle has this little blue icon at the very top of it. Now if I were to hit down it turns hollow and that means that that little blue reticle there is my landing pad and is is directly behind me because it's hollow but if I were to turn around it's gonna now in front of me and it's gonna be right in the center so it's right there landing pad 31 is right there landing gear down 
and I'm going to come in for a landing here. Landing gear deployed. Oh, a little too far to the forward. There we go. And down Dock we go. Engines disengaged. So we're going to go to the shark port services. We're going to refuel first. Always refuel when you get to a station. And we're going to go to the boat with the board. And turn in, deliver our message. Gift message. There we go. Now, this might be a little above the grade of the lesson, but a lot of these missions are by different factions. And as I said in the first episode, different. Uh, where's the faction? There it is. Different factions are for different things. So, let's say you wanted to ally, ally yourself with the Federation. The Everett Network is allied with the Federation, but the independent and traditional Everett factions are not. They're independent. So, uh, make sure that you know what faction you're doing the mission for before accepting it because some of them are not on the side of the law you might think they are. In fact, there's a lot of war behind that about how different factions are kind of covert fronts for uh, slave dealers and all that kind of stuff. So uh, as you play the game, you'll kind of get an idea by reading the text here. You, eventually you kind of learn to read between the lines and there, there's a lot of like shadowy stuff going on that you might not want to be a part of or maybe you do want to be a part of but like I said that's probably beyond the scope of this uh, video but just wanted to kind of throw that out there be aware of the factions that you accept missions from okay so I believe that's about it I think I covered most everything. I covered how to not overshoot in Super Cruise, uh, how to deliver missions, how to do basic navigation with the Galaxy Map. Uh, one thing I kind of skipped over here is that when you want to pull out a route to a system that you have to make mul multiple jumps to get to, like this one here, you can click Plot Route, and that will show you all the systems you can get to to get to your final destination and the beauty of plotting a route is that when you plot the route and exit and just uh, start flying around after you exit the, the uh, galaxy map the computer will keep up when you jump to the next system the computer will automatically target the next system in your jump and you won't have to go back into the list and reselect your next jump so that's the beauty of plot route. You can just, uh, it'll take, let's see, two or three jumps to get there, but you won't have to automatically change your route on every jump. You can, uh, the computer will manage that for you, so that's nice. Um, that's what, the filters here, I mean, I kind of glossed over them. I'll admit that. But a lot of stuff is. A lot of stuff you're going to have to just kind of learn on your own because it's pretty complex. The, the uh, trade data, that's something you can ha pretty much have to do yourself with pen and paper. Figuring out which systems are good for what kind of trade. Uh, I will say that when you're first starting out, trading is not worth it. You don't have enough cargo capacity in your cargo hold. Uh, make trading worth it based on the cost of, of traveling and all that stuff so the best way you're gonna learn how to make money when you're first starting out is going to be just doing the missions some of them might not be so good but I mean as you saw on the mission screen a lot of them are worth 
50,000 credits, and those you can probably do. Like this one you could do, this one you could do pretty easily, you know, doing the war zone. Um, as I said, when you enter war zones, as soon as you enter the war zone, as soon as you travel to it and enter it, you have to choose a faction with the right hand panel, which I've already mentioned in the previous video. Uh, do, not, do not forget to choose a faction when you enter that. Uh, because half the enemies will become hostile and the other half will become friendlies. So, yeah. Other than that, there's not a lot I can cover. So, I guess I'm going to end the video here, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I will see you guys again next time. Bye.